Um, this is the a live demo for November, and our Patreon project this month is Mijas in Spain. Um, anyone that was on the Pat chat um, uh, two or three nights ago, we discussed in a little bit more detail, go into that, um, my, my thoughts on composition very shortly. Um, just go through the interface for you. Uh, we're using the Crowdcast system here, and I think you found the chat um, mechanism there down the right-hand side. There is a, a, a question icon. If you've got any questions for me um, in various stages, phases of the process, um, I will answer your questions. So, so please uh, try not to put questions into chat. Pop them into the question icon on your uh, panel there on the site. I'll do my best to answer that. Uh, very importantly, we've got the green source photo button um down there hopefully um in the middle where you can access um this lovely high res source photo that we're going to base our paintings on right well uh this is our project then for november and it's mihas it's san san sebastian church in mihas and uh, we discussed this on our, our last pat chat um some ideas about composition and what the focus will be i think the the main um, aspects, the main focus of this of this subject is going to be the perspective of the scene, um, both left and right. We we're looking at the facade of the San Sebastian Church, and yes, a little bit of perspective here, but but also quite steep angles um as we go higher up the the elevation of that church a little bit sort of more level down the street level then on the right hand side we've got that building um almost vertical almost vertical with the um rooftop there and then uh, we were discussing on patch at probably the eye level is right about there the horizon is right about there everything's level there and then we're starting to get um going down to street level the angles go the other way so perspective it's also going to be an exercise in composition as well. Try to move things around to get a balance to the composition. I know one or two of you thought about doing this as a vertical format, uh, maybe just um, focusing on the on the uh, facade of the church and the, the alleyway here. Um, I did a little bit of um, digging, a bit of research on uh, street view on Google Maps and this location there's a street going up that way where this lady is there's a street coming up where where the photograph was taken from there's a street there there's a building in the middle we're coming down to like a t-junction here so there's a little road up there road down there I have been to Mihas once um, about eight or nine years ago and it it never changes um i don't think um it's a, it's a really quaint um little little sort of well large village small town up in the mountains um above the coast in southern southern spain costa del sol and it's all sort of these whitewashed two-story um buildings there beautiful buildings and all these narrow narrow streets inevitably there's the i don't know where you can make up there's the there are these souvenir shops all over the place a bit odd to have a souvenir shop right next to the church but anyway there you go um it's all quite compact there but yeah composition that figure well there's two figures there lurking in the shadows we were we were thinking on patcha maybe move that figure um have that figure a dark figure against a light background how about that also, um, one of our members came up with a, a really good suggestion. This shadow here, the, the existing shadow, goes across there, and then it comes down on that right-hand side to us. Um, maybe uh, get a bit more inventive with the shadow shades. Perhaps there could be a slither of light coming up here, and then maybe a foreground shadow um, extending over to the building on the right. And maybe shooting up this building on the right hand side which might be possible because as i say um if you do a bit of research of this scene there is a building um in the bottom left corner maybe that's casting a bit of shadow 
across maybe uh, slightly earlier time perhaps i think this is i think this might be later in the day i believe i think this might be well we've got a time there seven o'clock i reckon this is about seven seven p.m i believe anyway all right so it's going to be an exercise in those shadows and shadow shapes um of course uh an aspect of this is getting you getting feedback and a critique. Those of you on the relevant Patreon level are going to get an, a, a personal video critique from me. Um, more on that later on and in the posting that um, I will make on the Patreon system, giving you full instructions on how to play back this recording and also um, submit your, your, your uh, painting, a photo of your painting to me for that critique. Anyway, materials for this. Um, Saunders, my normal Saunders Waterford here, um, and it's cold press, 15 by 11 inches, uh, 300 grams, 140 pounds in weight. Um, normal palette of colours, I'll describe them as I go through. Brushes wise, my brush of the moment, a Tintoretto size 6. Series 1407, um, quite a good mop brush, really cheap, <laughs> probably under $15, um, 12 or 13 quid, and lightweight, nice balance to it, and um, a very good, a very good um, mop brush. I may also be using some other synthetic brushes as well as I go through. Uh, but first of all, the my thoughts on the composition. So my my photo here um, that was taken by uh, one of our members, Rosa. Thanks very much, Rosa, for the kind sharing of your your image. And uh, one of the benefits, of course, of Patreon is that we get to uh, select every month um, a a photo from the members' library for uh, that particular month's project. So thanks very much, Rosa. And um, yeah, I think I think the the, the actual um, photograph is um, it's a lovely it's a lovely composition um, straight off and the lovely shadow shapes. Um, I think the only thing that I'm well, the major thing I'm going to be changing um, is the figure, put, moving the figure over to the right and introducing that um, that shadow shape as well. I might just move the church up just a little bit, tiny tiny bit um and make a feature of this that's quite light there that's one of the lightest areas of the whole scene followed by maybe that wall there and then the real dark sir well bottom left hand corner um maybe up the top right there this overhang here as well tricky thing from the drawing point of view it is the perspective and all of these little curves here so do your best on that. Um, all I can say is um, draw in lightly, first of all, with a pencil, and then just prepare, prepare to rub out those lines if you think you're not going quite right. Um, all right. So let me, let me do my drawing then, first of all. I'll, I'll try and give as much commentary as I go through. Um, I'm going to start by, by drawing in the top, top left-hand corner, getting in the perspective of the uh, building to the left of the church and then getting in the that's that bright wall facing us and then just um, Just a little indication of the overall shape of the facade where the bell opening is the bell. I call this the bell tower. Um, I'm not sure what the architectural term terminology for it is, but um, we'll call it the bell tower. Left and right of the left and right of that facade. Uh, 
so that's that top angle there, that top angle there. That line is that line there. So I'm trying to get these lines correct and then kind of fill in more of the detail um, once I've got those major lines um, correct in my mind. Um, so we've got the background the building at the back of the street that's facing us a little bit like that that's 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 the kind of roof there and then on this side on the right hand side we've got the right hand building um, I get in the edge of the roof first of all there's this flag i don't think i'm gonna bother with the flag but i will bother with the with the light the flag might be more of a a temporary feature this little banner here um i'm not going to bother with that uh, but i will put in the the uh lamp as a more permanent um thing in here so let's get in that let's get in that light So that's the bracket supporting the light and we're looking up underneath the light so there is a little bit of perspective with the light as well in the angles that we've got in that light so um uh, the, the other tricky thing with this light is it's right in the middle at the top of it is is right um, in front of the the deep shadow underneath the eave of the roof. So got a little bit of um, work to do on the contrast on that side. Building comes down, and then we've got the ground, the top of the ground floor. We come down to street level. Back to the church. Sorry, I'm hopping all over the place here. We've got these two little, two little curves there. We've got this blind over the souvenir shop there's this quite ornate entrance here as well um not sure about this window and balcony that might be just a little bit too much detail on that left hand side so um don't personally don't worry about that too much let's get in the base of the church and the building to the left so street level is sort of a little bit like that and we've got the blind for the souvenir shop there with a little flap so there's the blind itself and the little flap on the edge. Um, now above the doorway of the church, there's another angle. And then the entrance to the church has a sort of archway um, and then either side there's like a pronounced um column or pillar that comes out not sure how we're gonna how we're gonna render that uh we've got the the uh 
clock in the middle of the bell tower. Um, there are these vertical lines coming down as well. Now, another tricky part is this left-hand side here, getting that curve there above this light wall, that little curve, and then we've got a vertical, and then a, the top of the archway as well. So, that's, that's that curve. And then that vertical um, side there. And then we've got the top of the bell tower going like that. Might need to be a bit, a little bit thicker. Uh, there's the opening for the bell where we can just about see a little bit of the sky peeking through, but it's all kind of dark in there. And again, quite light on that side. Shadows roughly, ooh, <laughs> let's finish off with the roof this side. Roof that side and then shadows um again one of the other one of the other um topics for discussion on pat chat when we were discussing this composition was this shadow wouldn't it be nice if it came down to the top of this blind and then sort of went across it so uh, a part of the blind is in the sun part in the shadow but it just creates another dimension um just stops that 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 shadow a little bit so let's just imagine that shadow going across and it goes maybe a little bit sort of <laughs> if you can follow my drift down the wall hits the blind um slightly different angle all right and then um maybe we've got the rest of the shadow going across like that got the shadow of the church um going up the wall so you can see the profile of that church i've got to get the figure in the light so let's get that figure this this figure here um around about that sort of position so for me and the important thing here is getting the figure the right size in the context of the area it's going to add some sense of scale um, of course it's another uh, focal it could be a focal point um, it just gives it just gives some indication of the scale of the buildings and, a, and a, another dimension to the painting as well um, the figure the figure is almost the top of the figure. Imagine there; it's almost just above halfway, um, halfway up that door height, or maybe just below the flap of the blind as well. All right. So, um, imagining that line going across, around about there. Bigger. So I imagine um, a female figure there. Now this shadow, this diagonal shadow here is continuing on down, going across the ground and meeting that figure 
hopefully that figure will be a little bit dark against the lighter the lighter background but this shadow we're imagining it going back and then um so the bit of light here and then perhaps a bit of shadow coming over over to that right hand building going up so if you imagine it going across the street and then up that might give us a little bit of an extra interest so this is all shade shadow in here up to the figure shadow there shadow there shadow there shadow there and shadow there as well uh I think I'm nearly there with the drawing, actually. Let's just double check everything. Uh, windows, there's a window here. Uh, we get, we we'll just get the the impression of a window in here, but no, no real detail. Okay, um, the window here is obscured by the shadows. So let's just move the window. Um, to the side of the window there. And there are some windows here as well. Oops, not there. Uh, windows here as well. So we're getting a window there. Again, we've got to be careful because the, the light is in front of that window. So we've got to be a little bit careful with the, with the uh, definition of that window. And then um, this ground floor well, there's quite complicated windows and bars here. Not sure. Maybe it might, might be a bank or something like that. Um, so perhaps quite a sort of secure um, place, but there's ledges and windows there. Let's just imagine it like that. So just one figure. I think that's about it. Um, let me just see if there's any questions. Okay, don't think there's any questions. All right, let me this crack on then. With the painting, now this sky, is a very um flat wash no clouds an intense blue i want to try and lay down a fairly smooth wash so i'm going to dampen the surface of um the paper this just the sky area with some clear water so i'm using a flat brush for this and hopefully it's a clean brush so just going over the sky area. So carefully painting around. I don't need to go right up to the edge, but just covering the main parts of the sky, almost up to the edge of the buildings. An even application. And I just accidentally went over this little light wall there, which I do want to have a hard edge. Now I've got a little bit of a slope on my board, so the water is gradually with gravity coming down, settling here. I'm just making sure again, just applying that over the scene, over that sky area. Right, sky then. 
I'm going to go with a fairly intense blue, a warm, a warm blue, altering blue, and a cobalt blue. A combination of those two, I think, will will give us that kind of this sort of rich blue color. All right. Mop brush then, and cobalt blue, altering blue, kind of a 50-50 mix. Just keep mixing it to get that sort of intensity. And make sure you've mixed enough to cover the whole scene as well. So you can see as I'm laying it down, it's it's sort of behaving itself and just hopefully giving us quite a smooth application. Doesn't matter if we go a little bit lighter towards the bottom, which of course we would do. Right, down the other side. This is where the drawing hopefully will be good for you. And we're just sort of following those lines basically. There we are. And with that sky, resist the temptation to go back into it once it's done it's done now we were discussing on pat chat the color of these walls so they're white buildings and this is an intense white i'm going to leave the paper um, there for that wall so that's going to be that white wall but the wall, fa the facade of the, the front of this church here, that's not white, it's off-white. And I, we, discussions went on then as regards what colour would that be? Um, warm, cool, and so on. How intense is it? Um, so it's, it's obviously darker than that. It's darker than that. That, that, is, that is a little bit darker than that as well. So we need to um, get that in. But obviously with watercolor, we're painting from light to dark. So we've got to consider where, where what's the next lightest air, what's the next darkest area that I'm gonna I'm gonna paint after these in very intense and um, bright areas. So let's just get in this back wall here, first of all, then this wall here, then that right hand side, then the actual street level, and then we can start um after that, when that's dry, we can start then getting in the shadows. Right, that back, that back wall. Let's mix something. Just slightly off-white. I've got a bit of burnt sienna here. So just take off the white of the paper a little bit. Now, this church, I've got to be careful with some of the key lighter areas, like the, these light sides to those columns, that light there. But try and get in the um, overall. Um, 
just try and get into a, a deeper value of that facade. Uh, not too dark, again. Um, let's, uh, let's just go with this theme of um, basically altering blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. on this so on this uh, side here altering blue burnt sienna It will dry lighter, of course. Be very careful if your sky is still damp, not going too far up to the, the edge. You don't want to get a nasty bloom occurring. No. We'll just come further over this church and then get in the get in that lightness against the lightness against those columns if you find you've gone a little bit too dark you can always of course just lift off a little bit with the uh, paper towel or something like that tissue just in places just to get back that lightness again. Right, just continue over this side here. And then going quite cool on this left hand side this this is not the end shadow um, this is just really covering up the paper um, this blind here is a sort of well you can make it any color you want to but to me it looks like a sort of uh, like a tan color um, something like that a little bit of maybe a bit of yellow ochre bit of burnt sienna would give me the the color of that of that blind okay um Street is going to be a warm color, sort of almost terracotta, um, I believe. So a, a, war, a warmish color. All right, so I've got a bit of light red here. Let's see what that's going to be like. Again, it's going to dry lighter. up to the figure. Up 
up to the building. Remember, we're just covering up the paper at this stage. Now, the building on the right is a similar value to the church. And it's sort of that grayish color. Um, so I, I'm using a bit of cobalt blue, a bit of burnt sienna, and just really go over that wall, around the light, the lamp, And then down to the ground floor. Just leave a little bit of light there. Could be side of the windows, just catching a bit of light. Go over to the edge. And that is pretty much it for the initial wash. Main objective, getting in the sky, painting around the lighter bits of the church. I've gone up to my pencil lines. I might rub those out later on just to get my crisp white edge back again. And then just really covering the whole scene, apart from those areas that I want to keep, um, that I want to keep deliberately either light or I want to handle in a special way. The next step will be the rooftops, these terracotta rooftops, and also then getting in the shadows. So I'm going to speed things up a little bit by using my hairdryer to speed up the drying process. Now, the sound should just mute itself out when I when i turn this on so hopefully there won't be um a sound uh too loud a sound for you hang on a second All right, that's fairly dry now. Just let the paper cool down a bit with it being quite warm. I don't want to paint immediately on it because it would dry just a little bit too quickly. All right, the rooftops, they're going to be a, for me, a light red. I should go through my colors, by the way. I've got neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green, ridden green, um, cobalt green, cerulean blue, Cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, and then a few opaqueish paints down there. Right, rooftops are going to be a little bit of alizarin crimson and that light red. Maybe a touch of the ultramarine blue as well. A bit of burnt sienna. Um, let's just see if that will give me the desired color. So I'll start in the top left-hand corner here. And just an indication of those tiles, a little bit of light hitting the tops, hence I've left 
a little bit of the paper um, showing through there. And then the next row down I'm using my brush in the direction of the tiles just to give an impression of those rows of tiles. And then the background building. And we're defining the edge of the church, the right hand side of that church, a little bit of a little bit of lightness to the ridge of the roof. We go over to the right hand side. And the uh, the left hand edge of that right hand building. All right. Now we are ready for these shadows, which will really start to define the buildings in a lot more detail, their form and their shape. And it's starting to give a little bit more of a three dimensional form to it. And <laughs> at the moment, it still looks a total mess. Um, but I'll start with those shadows quite sort of abstract shadow shapes. I'm not sure exactly what's causing this shape of shadow up there, but I'll go with that. Quite nice um, shapes of shadows there. This key one coming down the scene as well, over the, over the uh, street, and then up that um, background building, across the street here, up this building as well. And we'll finish off with these shadows on that right hand side. <clears throat> right, shadows. I want to think about warm or cool shadows here as well. So look at the image and just zoom in if you can and think, um, is, that a, is that a cool blue? Is it a blue? Is it a, can you see any reds in there? Violets, um, just, just sort of observe the scene a little bit. Um, I think the I think the shadow in the top here is well, it's darker than the rooftops. And then we've got this sort of nice shape coming down hits the hits the roof and then on the right hand side nice angle there So I'm going fairly cool with these shadows. Now, the shadow underneath this roof is a little bit darker. Like that. Again, doesn't matter if you leave a little bit of the, the paper showing through. There could be just some tiles catching the light. All right, um, shadow going across the wall, I think is fairly cool, but then a warm shadow because the, the ground is warm. Um, I think that's gonna, well, I'll go with a fairly warm color. So we'll be adding in a, some warmer hues into, into that shadow going across the street. But um, up the,
top left hand side and we're going to introduce some a little bit of a jagged edge make the edge interesting not perfectly straight not perfectly straight and then we hit this shot blind and this shadow goes quite dark down in the bottom left corner goes a little bit warmer there and then cool again Now this shadow, we can just add a little bit of color. I'm picking a bit of cadmium orange here just to add another dimension to that shadow, not make it too, too boring. And then the shadow going across the street, make it warm, so a bit of cadmium red, ultramarine blue. It's actually darker darker than the shadow going down the wall but a little bit lighter as we come out so I'm adding more water to my mix and connect with my figure connect with my figure and then go over to the building on the right hand side we then hit the wall and we go up that wall so I'm just imagining maybe something creating that shadow. We've got the shadow coming out from the church. that goes across the street on the far side and it sort of obviously has a has the shape of the bell tower but it gets a little bit narrower towards the top and I think quite cool um, just before the roof and And then on the roof, it just goes up the roof a little bit. Something like that. Now, while this is still, while the shadow is still a little bit damp, we can just... the paper towel just lift off a little bit of the um of that paint just to create the impression of the the um the pavement and the the slabs just a bit of an idea of the perspective and leading us into the into the scene right the shadow underneath this rooftop is going to be quite dark so ultramarine blue burnt sienna 
but quite an intense mix. Again, there's a bit of light hitting the edge of this roof. And come down, paint around the lamp. there and then we've also got the shadow on the overhang here so that's horizontal and then up the side and there's a bit of a shadow being created let's create let's create the impression of some of those bars with um with a few little loose lines there There we go. Right, drop in the figure now. Let's start with uh, a little bit of flesh color, two arms. legs and then the top of this figure and then maybe a bit darker for the bottom there we go a little bit of shadow um there's a darker shadow Just the top of the bell tower, and then also just on that left hand side, so it's light on the right, and then dark on that left. We've got the darkness of the doorway of the church. Go light at the bottom. Bit of shadow coming out from the column to the right of the doorway and then down to the ground and try and merge those two in together so we can almost 
can almost see exactly where the base of the church is. Right, that darkness, um, the left-hand side of the blind that is in the shade. So a darker, a darker value. And the flap coming down. All right, just see if there's any questions. I don't think there is. All right. Next step. Well, we're, we're now almost getting to the detail stage. I do need to do the light and the shadow of the light, but details, architectural details, windows, doorways, um, maybe strengthen up some of the lines on the on the road to help with the perspective. Right, for this smaller synthetic brush and just really observing the photo, observing the image and, and trying to still keep things loose, not getting too hung up with um, ultra detail, but just creating some of these main architectural details so with this synthetic brush smaller brush then less water on the brush quite dry really not too much water in the mix <clears throat> and start to strengthen up the shadow underneath those tiles there <clears throat> I'll just start in the top left corner. Um, just some of the lines on that tile there. And again, a little bit of strengthening of the shadow underneath the tiles then a few little lines defining that um, we've got a few little cables and whatnot coming down coming down to the shot blind and then a few lines defining these curves on the on the church well above the souvenir shop there there Um, right above the bell tower, there's a sort of weather vane will cross. I'm just strengthening up some of these lines. Um, we've got the line coming across the above the souvenir shop, continues over the church. Um, there are a few lines either side of the clock 
Get the clock in there. Of diamond patterns in there. Now, quite tricky by the doorway with the intricate nature of the, um, the, 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 the trim, the detail above the columns. Uh, let's just get in the top of the columns, first of all. Top of the columns, first of all, and Just below the top of the arch, there's some horizontals. Uh, back to the left. Just the impression of a window or something in there. And then underneath the blind of the souvenir shop, it's quite, it's quite dark. And this sort of defines that edge of the blind quite well. I'm picking up quite, quite thick paint here, very little moisture on the brush. And just some kind of a shape around the, well, at the bottom of the blind, maybe a doorway in there. I'm going to doorway. There's another doorway here on the left the left of the shop. It's quite a high doorway. So the rough shape of a rectangle there. Then a few lines on the street here. Just helps with the perspective a bit. Far side background building. Bit of shadow underneath the rooftop. And maybe just a few lines to, to find those tiles a bit more like that not too dark almost dry brush mark i picked up a little bit of light red off the palette um yes yeah, a case of pulling it all together now oh there's a a window here so light coming from the left we've got a very dark um top left corner of that window opening. Um, there's a little bit of a balcony here. So railing and then get a good edge, get a good edge with my brush 
and a few little lines like that. Let's get in the window on the far building. Not too dark because it's in the distance. Actually, maybe this is um, as it is in the photo. It's more of a an opening to a a terrace, a little balcony. So. Shadow under the balcony, railings. There we are. Uh, that figure might need a bit of more shadow coming up behind it. <clears throat> now this light this light is quite the actual metal bits of the light the lamp are quite dark the glazing is more like a sort of opaqueish color oh we've got a lamp down there as well let's get in that lamp as well so quite thick paint for the metal parts let's make this lamp around about here and the bracket for the light and then this one So there's my metal bits and then the ornate bracket like that. There's a window. Behind. Another window here. So the bottom that window get them in line uh, shadow shadow for these lamps back to my mop brush and pick up something cool so this light here like that and then this one Like that, maybe there's something creating a shadow coming off from the right hand side. Um, the glazing for the 
lamp. Pick up some. I've got some white gouache down in my bottom right corner of my palette, which is quite dirty. So I'm just adding a bit of moisture to that. And I don't know whether you can see bottom right corner, but um, something quite opaque here. And then just get that in. It looks like a light and then perhaps a little bit of glazing for that lamp as well. Uh, more detail, we need more detail. Perhaps a bit more to the street with some horizontals, some lines going across. Just a few lines. To indicate. That um, just give it more of a feeling of um, that, that pavement. Let's get a dark doorway in here. A little bit of light towards the bottom, but essentially that shape, there's a few little bits and pieces on the top of that roof. Maybe just a little impression of a balcony on that left hand side. Strengthen up the doorway, just get that sharper edge on that left hand side. That's better. There's a sort of window or um, religious icon just to the left of the doorway and Uh, the bell, the bell can be a little bit darker in there. Just a few more lines emphasizing the perspective. Uh, we've got a couple of a couple of lines here. There we go, that strengthens that side. The, I think we need some um, signage. This souvenir shop needs a little bit of signage above it. So with this brush, 
have I got enough space to get in souvenir? Um, I need to get a good point on my brush. S. O. U. V. E. N. I. R. S. Hopefully it's sort of almost in the middle. So. Souvenir shop. Left hand side is so dark, you can't really exactly see what's going on. I'm just adding in a few lines to indicate maybe some point of sale stuff or displays or um, litter bins, tables and chairs. I'm not sure what might be going on over there. Uh, <clears throat> let's give this lady in dark glasses. Um, I'm going to rub out these lines here. Hopefully, my hopefully my rubber is going to be um, clean. Let me just. Um, Last thing I want is to use a, a dirty eraser and smudge things. So I've got these pencil lines on these lighter areas and then hopefully that should get back a little bit of this brightness. Of course, the paint has to be really dry there we are a bit of a brighter edge to that area there <clears throat> uh, just a little bit of a, a line there bit of a line there There are there are some lighter where where these columns where this architectural detail is just sort of proud of the surface. It's just it just creates a little bit of lightness down the left hand side. You could use a little bit of white paint if you want to <coughs> down that left hand side just to bring it out a little bit. But I'm not going to bother. I think that might be just too much um, too much detail at this stage. Uh, right, I'm just really pulling it all together now. Um, these windows here could be maybe just strengthened up a little bit more. Sense of these railings. And then the lines underneath the windows, some sort of trim underneath those windows. Uh, just gonna use a flat brush to bring out some reflection of just indication of the slightly shiny nature of the um, of the surface. The flat brush, not too much 
watch on the brush. Just a little bit creates maybe a, the, the illusion of a, a shiny surface, which I guess you might get in the summer periods where there's no rain and you, know, you get all this foot traffic over the road and it um, gets a little bit, gets a little bit lighter, a little bit shinier surface. Right, well, there you are. Um, Mihas, uh, sunny day, concentrating on perspective, composition, moving, let's get back to the original photo, moving that figure over, trying to introduce some more interesting shadow shapes as well, uh, just exposing some of the um, light on the side of the, uh, the blind there. And yes, playing around with the shadows, getting, getting some, some, contrasting values and some good colors into those shadows as well so i hope you like this one um good luck with the project and i look forward to seeing your your efforts thanks very much indeed